How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be going over a cranking and no start fault in a Volkswagen. This had the 1.9 turbo diesel engine and in this video I'm going to be going over the step by step process on how I found and fixed that fault. Off. Go again. Okay, so first things first with any diagnosis that you're going to be doing, especially a cranking no start fault, try and gather as much information as you can and then go from there. Whether it's from the customer, whether it's from another technician in this case that was previously working on it and start to get a good picture or understanding as to what might have happened or where the vehicle was previously. In this case, I didn't have a lot of information, only that the engine light wasn't on, vehicle drove in, and then the fault occurred. So it was cranking away and it did not start. Now, off topic on this one, but if you are interested, I do have a noise related diagnosis on this same vehicle that I had done previously. I am going to be uploading that in the near future. So if you're interested in Volkswagen engines in general, be sure to come back and check out that video. Back to this one in hand, the first thing we want to do is we want to do a diagnostic scan and check to see if there's any fault codes present. Luckily enough, there was, so we do have an indicator as to where to go from. This was a P3008 fault code, a camshaft position fault that was showing up. And when we have that type of information, when we are assessing that type of code, we can make very calculated decisions on our next steps. One of those is to assess the live data, have a look at some valuable information in your scan tool. This is something I find technicians often overlook and they start to maybe swap out parts or skip some steps and end up going down the wrong path. In this case, it was going down the path of known problems. Checking known problems and technical and service, and service bulletins can be very, very useful. I use it myself all of the time, but it can set you astray and it can set you down the wrong path. You can start to look at just that common problem and think you have the code, you have a common problem, you have the answer. That was kind of the way this one was heading, but it wasn't the actual fault. The um, technician who was working on it did ask for assistance, so I was able to uh, redirect the diagnosis back in a different direction. Some of the checks you can do when you have that code, first of all, back to the scan tool, is getting the right PIDs up. Uh, engine RPM is one of the ones I wanted. I want to see that the engine RPM is being shown as I'm cranking the engine, whether it starts or not. Torsion value on this particular engine is another one that I want to show up. That's more for if the engine starts. I don't believe I'm going to get a reading without that, but I have it up at the same time. And the last one is the most important one, which is the camshaft um, speed. We want to see if the camshaft is actually giving any signal or not. And in this case, looking at this video now, you can see that it is getting speed and it is swinging away. I do a couple of very quick checks on this one. One is I disconnected the sensor and the engine actually started. Wait there. Try it now. That is one test that you can do on some sensors and it can give you an indicator. On this one, it just shows that the engine is capable of putting enough fuel towards it and we do have a clear indicator as to where the fault is related. I don't take much more from that information other than that. The engine's capable of starting with the sensor disconnected, but we need the sensor connected. So therefore, when I put it back in, it fails to start again. We still have to keep following our steps. The next step in this one 
is to check the um, I suppose the condition of that wiring that known problem in the loom where wires break um, but we can test and prove that or we can test and rule that out on a three wire camshaft position sensor you're going to have a power a ground and a signal on most applications I'm not going to say them all number one and number three uh, pins are going to be the power and the ground you're going to check the power on the ground at the same time with the ignition on and you can see the reading here It's got the exact reading that we want. I also check the signal, which is the middle one, and we get this reading here. Now, with those quick and simple tests, I do use my power probe in one instance, and I also use my multimeter when I was showing the other technician on the other one, but both tests showed that the um, integrity of the wiring from the ECU downwards right down to the plug we were were good I don't need to look any further than that I am completely happy with the results I've got and the tests I'm reading you can do a wiggle test on the loom if it's an intermittent start fault and see if you're getting it to jump in and jump out there is a possibility you um, by pulling on the loom and rocking it up and down at certain points you might get to see the voltages change on the multimeter as you are doing that Regardless, on to the next one, we now have bypassed the wiring and we're looking straight down at the sensor and what the sensor is reading. So we're going to be assessing that sensor. We know it was picking up signal, but the next thing I want to look at, which is most important on this one, is the timing itself. So we take off that pipe that's in our way and we take off that timing cover. Now with that cover removed and when you visibly look down and look at the timing belt and where the camshaft is actually sitting, can you see a potential issue by just assessing that from there? In this case, I was able to see a fall straight away. I am familiar with these engines. I've worked on them many times over the year, and that torsion value plays a factor here. These um, camshafts can be adjusted, and the torsion value is in relation to that. So you can adjust the timing by loosening off those three bolts. And if you look down at this image here, you can see that it has maxed out on one side. From all of the information and all of the timing belts I've done over the years and looking at um, technical information on them, the bolt is usually pretty much a dead center when you're setting up the timing on these. I could see that it was maxed out on one side and that gave me huge suspicions that this had actually slipped out of position. And if you look even closer here, you can see that the markings on it indicate that it had slipped position and moved out of the way. So the easiest, quickest thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen them off and I'm gonna adjust that back smack bang in the center again. I wanna see if this vehicle is either gonna start or make an attempt to start by just doing them checks. Now we can go about, we can check all of the timing, but this is something that we can do nice, quick and simple on it and see if we have a result. I do that and I put the pipe temporarily back in, that intercooler pipe that is running along the top side of it, I put that back in position and I check to see if the vehicle is gonna start. And as you could see there, we got the engine to start straight away. It was right bang on the button first try, no hesitation, and the torsion value was 2.5 or 2.45 was the readings I was getting.
Now after we got the engine started we could see on the live data that the torsion value was now reading, it was reading at 2.45. That can change slightly as the vehicle heats up but in this case it's capable of asserting it straight away and we can always adjust those later on. We can adjust them at any time. Um, if it's your vehicle, you can speak to your customer if it's not, and you can make a decision whether you wanna recheck all the timing, hone in on all of those adjustments, and get it to as close to, I think it's zero or between zero and one is the best readings for those torsion values. If you know them exactly, post them down in the comment section below. This video is pretty much ended here. I just wanted to give you all of those steps as when I was brought in to diagnose this cranking no start fault. By following those steps for yourself, you can rule out the loom, you can rule out ECU, you can rule out the sensor, and you can start to find the actual fault that's occurring. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.